talked about earlier with the, the stance, the balance, um, and then the pivot mount. We're gonna take that into some actual shots. And so this first shot that we're gonna do is just a standard crossing target. And we'll go from there. We'll start implementing um, some of these hunting concepts, but also a hunting mindset. Cause we're, we're gonna shoot it a little bit different than if we were having a competition mindset. And so we're gonna try to implement a hunting mindset to these different shots. And by hunting mindset, do you mean like different approaches to like the target and yeah, so, methods? Or? So we might shoot one target s several different ways, okay. right? So, okay. you know, certain targets, especially like crossing targets, we can shoot a few different ways. Yeah, because when I step into a FETAS peg, I'm like, okay, this is the way I'm shooting that target and yeah. I'm not going to change the method, but I can see how if you're getting a bird, it's like, well, you can't really control what exactly it's gonna do. So exactly. you have to be ready to react to whatever it does. Yep. Okay, cool. 100%. Awesome. All right, so let's take a look at this first target. So it's gonna come from our left. Ready? Pull. No bird. Let's look at it one more time. Pull. Hard. Break. Right, so I'm gonna break it here. Got my hard focus just as it comes into the skyline hold halfway. Now, this first technique that I'm going to implement, I'm thinking about all those things. Obviously, we can't uh, do those when we're actually hunting as far as our, our spots, but we are going to do that just to practice technique. We're going to start from a feet test mount, and then we'll work our way into maybe more of a hunting mount as well. But um, So I'm thinking about this, this setup, the move, and let's just shoot a couple with sustain lead. Pull. All right, that was a pretty good shot. The biggest thing that I'm focusing on is I'm kind of visualizing if that was a bird, okay, and I've got my adrenaline up a little bit, maintaining my, my balance, my posture, but then also the pivot. And, um, and I'm really focusing on a solid pivot because I have the shot cam on the end of this gun and, it's, and it unbalances the gun. So really focus on my left hand. We'll do that one more time. Pull. All right, so this next technique that we're gonna do is gonna be a swing through. And so I'm gonna let the target beat me and I'm gonna to have to play catch up with it. Now I felt a pretty good lead as a sustained lead. So <clears throat> coming from behind, it's gonna be a little bit to get back to that, that lead, all right? So let's see if we can swing through a couple. Pull. So it takes a little bit longer for the gun to get to the, the lead that it needs. We'll do one more. Um, you know, a lot of birds, especially slower moving birds, will require a swing through. This is a fast moving bird, but we, in hunting, sometimes we get beat, right? So <clears throat> it beat me and I got to play catch up. So let's do it again. Pull. Awesome. Now I don't love shooting. I don't love shooting crossers swing through. Um, the next method that we're going to do is a pull away. So say we uh, make a, a good pivot, but we're we're connected real close to the bird. So let's let's see if we can pull away from it. It's going to look similar to a swing through, just from not from behind the bird, but basically from the bird. Pull. All right, so for me with swing through and pull away, especially on this type of crossing target, very, very difficult for me to get out in front of that target enough. Just for my mind's sake, I'm gonna shoot a couple more uh, how I normally would with the sustain lead. Pull. Pull. Nice, now for me, I know that when I have a crossing bird, especially if it's a really fast moving bird, and a lot of these Eurasian doves are gonna be fast moving birds, for me, it's easier to implement a sustain lead 
<clears throat> on crossing okay. targets. And so the, the slower moving bird that we have, and especially when it, it's like a flushing bird, right? Like a, a quail that we're gonna show in a, mm -hmm. a further, or a, a later video, we're gonna let that quail pass us and go get it. But um, for me, for crossers, especially when it's got a lot of speed, I'm a lot better when I shoot a sustained lead. And I think that is part of what might make a hunting a little bit more difficult mm -hmm. is there are gonna be times where you're surprised by a bird and yeah. it comes out on the right side of your gun and going right, That's right, right? And so like you have to, it might be a really good shot to take, might have good yardage, I guess, I don't know, but it could be that. So you need to understand what that move looks like as a hunter yeah. and how to make it successfully. Now, in shooting targets, that's not gonna be your high percentage move if you're trying to go for a good round of 100, but on hunting, you have one good shot right here. So how can we get that swing through move yeah. on a target we normally wouldn't, or I'm sorry, on a bird, in a move that we wouldn't normally on a target. Yeah. So you kind of have to, I see that you can perfect those moves, which will actually apply to your, your target shooting also. Yeah, that's true, that's very true. You wanna take a couple shots? Sure, sure. Choose some different techniques here. I'll start off with the sustain, what I would normally do for the target shooting. All right, now I'll try the swing through. Pull. Pull. It definitely takes more time. Like the connection, you have to be connected longer is what the feeling that I'm getting um, compared to that sustained lead. Full. Full. One thing that I really feel is that connection at the end. Um, I think another thing that applies to it is FaceTime. Mm. Um, now we haven't hunted yet and we will get to that, um, but a couple of notes that I'm taking for myself is that extra long connection to get that towards the end, but also that FaceTime too. I feel like as soon as you can see that bird, you could mess up your stance and your balance, mess up your pivot, but also, just pull the trigger as soon as it hits your face. So right. it has to have that match up with that bird. Yeah. Yeah. So this next target that we're gonna shoot won't necessarily simulate a Eurasian dove that we're gonna be shooting, but it would certainly simulate um, a quail or a pheasant or some type of flushing bird, mm -hmm. some type of upland bird. Um, so let's implement these basics into this target as well, okay? okay. And we probably won't shoot it multiple different ways. Um, there, there's two ways that I, think we could shoot it. Um, you can't necessarily shoot this target with a sustain lead, but you can shoot it with just kind of going to it or letting it pass you. The most consistent way would be letting it pass you. But let's take a look and we'll implement it in here. So, all right, pull, we got hard, break. Okay, so it's just kind of a slow going away shot. Very similar to a lot of uh, flushing birds that we'll get. Um, and we'll show you some other types of angles of these in, in a later video as well, okay? But very important to um, just kind of visualize yourself walking up on a covey of quail or as, you know, a dog's getting birdie, maybe flushing a pheasant or something, and we want to get a really good ready position. And then when it flushes, we just want to get a good pivot mount let it clear the, the gun and then just go up and shoot it. So it'll look like this. Pull. Do it again. 
again. Pull. Nice. So that second one, much cleaner move. The first one wasn't the cleanest move that I've ever had, uh, but that second one was very, very clean. Now the other scenario that could happen with this target is, um, say we're, we're walking. Okay, I'm gonna do this with an unloaded gun and the gun's kind of pointed up in the air, right? We'll see a lot of hunters walk like this because it's safe um, or they'll walk with a gun open and we'll do some of these uh, more advanced concepts for hunting later. But, um, but just you know, thinking about what that, that would create as far as the mount goes, if it was open and it flushed, I would do the same feel or have the same feel that I just did. But if the gun was up in the air like this and I'm out, it's gonna be more like mounting right to the break point, right? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna shoot a shot there where I'm kind of holding a lot closer to the break point. So up here and I'll just pivot right into that target. Pull. Pull. So a lot less gun movement. However, a little more difficult to see that target. And when you do have the gun up in the air for hunting, we really wanna be able to get our eyes through the gun, see, see that target and not worry about the barrel. We just wanna worry about a clean pivot mount. Cool. You wanna shoot a couple of those, babe? Sure. The move that I'm gonna be comfortable with is letting it come up and clear and then make that connected move to the bottom. I will say the one just with holding the gun up in the air, not being a hunter, it is probably gonna feel a little bit unnatural, um, but I can see if it's, it's way more safer for the hunting aspect. So let's go ahead and let's try it out a little bit. All right, now I'll try it with my gun being a little bit higher. Pull. Pull. Uh, that one I still felt myself come down and let it clear. So that's going to be something that's a little bit different. Yeah, one of the that things that I would aspect. say, like if you know I'm, 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 I'm coaching you in that move is don't rush that shot, right? Mm, so if you're yeah. holding up high absolutely, and you know you see, see a target flush or whatever, or you know, a bird flush, when you make the mount, if you're already there, okay, don't just Bye. pull the trigger right, right when it gets there. Make sure that you have a little bit of connection, okay? Yeah, so if you want to try one more, you want to sure, I'll try one. Want to try try one more? See if you can feel connected. Pull. Nice. Pull. Little bit. There's like a little little matchup right at the end, um, yep. and it's just not pulling the trigger as soon as it hits your face. Yep, and so that's Great advice. one of the, I would say, biggest concepts that you need to be thinking about as we're preparing for the hunt, and I need, I need to be too, <clears throat> is having just that little bit of connection with that target. Yeah, absolutely. A little bit of mashup, cool. and so, um, which is very interesting because it's the same stuff that we struggle with on a, on a daily basis with our clay shooting games right. too. You know, it's just a little different feel coming from different directions. And, um, and I really think that if you have fun with hunting, like it doesn't take away from your clay shooting and um, it just makes it better, like right. you said earlier. Absolutely, that's so. really cool. Awesome. Well, we are so thankful that you guys have joined us today and um, we're excited to bring you some more great content leading up to a couple hunts that we're going to do mm -hmm. and it's going to be a lot of fun. So we will see you next time.